And welcome to the Galatian Musical Podcast. It is beer, metal, and swearing, a ghost cult joint effort. Of course, I am Nick Cameron, the founder of Galatian Musical, joined by my good friend, a man with always a little bit of dance, a song in his heart, and some coal on his face, Keefy Chimney Sweep. How are we doing today, buddy? I did, I did not know where you were going with that, sir, but I am okay. How are you? If you ever know where I'm going, I fucked up. Like Wolverine says... After quoting Deadpool, let's fucking go. Here's how we do this. It is the greeting, beer check, vinyl check, news check, shirt check, meat of the day, which is thank you for joining us this week for Queen Jazz. These are spirit fingers, and these are gold. The Glacial Musical Podcast Beer of the Week is Galaxy is the Divided Sky by Four Hands Brewing, brewed with Galaxy Hops. How's my ah. sound doing, by the way? We didn't even do a sound check, which we're supposed to do. We don't know how to do one, so it's fine. It, well, I mean, like, if it starts to sound staticky, we'll stop oh, no, no. recording. I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you yeah, know. if it starts to fuck I'm up. I'm pouring. We'll, we're, we're... It is a beautiful pour. Nobody uh, got to hear the pour because you were yap-yapping about I technical was... difficulties that weren't even happening. Well, I'm worried. Go. Sorry, I was going to say, if we have a staticky issue... Unfortunately for the Sean Rayford in- interview, which I hope people go back and listen to because that guy's phenomenal. Um, and I really love his stuff. Look, if I it really... happens, I'm going to pull a cheers when, when Coach and Harry the Hat were working on scamming Harry's, uh, you know, working on scamming Coach's his buddy. I'll give the old bunt signal. Fair enough. Uh, if it got, yeah, give us the bunt signal. I will stop the recording, restart my shit. We'll exit, come back in, re go. Anyway, uh, what's just one more time? Give us your beer origin and what it is. Uh, this is a Four Hands Brewing Divided Sky. They have a couple of Four Hands has a few um, a few IPAs. They've got Divided Sky, which is Galaxy Hops. Its pairings are blue cheese and spicy food. That so is fascinating. What, so what that says to me is you should pair this with what Kefi? I mean, chicken wings and blue cheese. There we go, buffalo wings. Because it's thank you. I am drinking a not a beer but a liquid death. Murder someone's thirst. Murder somebody's thirst. Severed lime, my go-to. Nice. Still and a great, still a great day. Yeah, I'm no glass this week. Just drinking it raw dog. So cheers. Cheers, my friend. Good to see you. I should point out I am drinking it out of my Schlitz goblet because this has just become my favorite. My favorite glass. I mean, look at this. Look at it. This is amazing. It's got dimples. All righty. If you don't mind, I'm going to move on into my vinyl check to keep the rig rolling. We good with that? Go for it. All right. It's going to start off with regrets. My first regret of the week. Kansas. Whatever the hell this stupid thing is. Uh, Power. Got this couple of bucks i'm like you know what i've been seeing this i've had my hands on it for a long time i laid my hands on it the world said to buy it this is terrible this is fucking awful do not buy this record how much was it um too much because i was not paid to take it i think it was like five bucks i mean we're not talking any significant it's, it's not a significant outlay but the outlay now is actually got yelled at at a at the Christmas in July party we went to, although it was only June, on Saturday, and my wife's like, "Larry, was like, how many records did you buy to arrive this week? How many did I buy this week? One. Mm-hmm. H- how many are arriving this week? I don't know. That that's a different question. That that's not fair. I don't I know object. is a bad answer to give the wife because she definitely. Lawyer wife is going to lawyer you about that shit. Ah, uh, you know Badging what? The witness. Her response was just calm down. We're going to run out of space. But I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to buy another Calyx. And she just looked at me like, what is wrong with you? I mean, that's a fair response too. Okay, moving on. Now, now that we've gotten the uh, Garbaggio out of the way, let's get the Golden Child. And by Golden Child, I mean somebody who worships Satan. Deicide. Whatever the hell this thing is called, the new one, banished by sin, which I think is a bad title, really. Because I mean, not to mention it, the very bad artwork. 
Isn't he already banished by sin? I mean, that that already happened. That happened on I first record. I think banished record. because of sin. Yeah, that would be better. I mean, like, he is sinning, so now he's banished like... Banished due to sin. You can't get... I don't think you want to get banished by the thing you're doing. Like, oh, I'm banished by beer. What does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. It means, like, I'm an idiot. But, yeah, the artwork is... is wow. It's like AI Windows Paint. What we got going on here? We got Glenn Benton as the devil... And a vampire at the same time. He's like, you know, Count Beelzebub going on here. It's not good. This is bad. This is just bad. And then to couple it all, it's a damn gatefold. Come on, we don't need this to be a gatefold. And then we got, man, these old fuckers. Look at how old these people are. I will say this is one of the first premiere releases of the year from this brand new label. So this is Raining Phoenix Music, which founded last late last year. So this is like a huge tentpole album for them. So I, I didn't even notice it was a new label. Having Deicide is a big deal. And Okay, um, just for the record, we should have done an episode on this. This is a great record. I mean Deicide is you know, it's remember Juan Encarnacion? Remember him? Yes. Everybody in St. Louis hated him when he was here. Because, you know, all he would do is hit 30 home runs and knock in 60 ribbies and bat 305, which just if you, for like 4 million bucks a year at the time. So he was cheap and productive. But you know what he didn't do? He didn't hustle when he got a walk. He was one speed incarnacion. One speed. Get it? That's Deicide, man. Deicide has one speed. <sighs> like really fast. So... You only need about 30 minutes of music on their records, and they seem to know that, which is great. All righty. Now that the seriousness is over, let's have a little bit of fun. The last record of the week, Dragon Force, Warp Speed Warriors. You want to talk about a band that knows they're a joke? They know. And they're fine with it. Uh, another gatefold single record. Uh, nothing cool. It did come in the, the, the inner sleeve. So it came in the polyline sleeves. It's got a cool, like, Japanese-ish thing, although it looks like the... That mecha dragon looks like a phallus with balls. Right there, you see it? You made me see it. I didn't want to see it, but now I can't unsee it. I'm sorry. If I see something, everyone gets to see it. And by gets to, I mean has to. So that is the vinyl check for the week. Was that a, a Metal Blade record album for them? Who put that one? Um, this one on Napalm now. Napalm. This is the brand new one. Oh, is that the new one? Yeah, I have no yeah, interest new in one. anything new they have to say or do. But I did see them. Why? For like 10 their minutes. new stuff is just like their old stuff. I didn't like their old stuff. They're boring. Well, if you don't me. like their old stuff, then I mean, why would you bother getting their new stuff? I would. Here's their old stuff. <laughs> Here's their new stuff. It's like Lord of the Rings, man. You want to, here's the first movie. You want to see the second movie? Ooh. I mean, it's it's the same. Again, they also have one speed. Uh, speaking of Lord of the Rings, this should be a news item, but uh, Lawyer Wife bought tickets to see the 18-hour uh, fellowship this weekend. So. Rip your bum. Your bum is going to be sore after that. I'm going to bring a second bum to eat because I'm going to need a snack halfway through. going to eat your own butt. Yeah, I sneak my own snacks into the movies. Um, we'll save the other news item because I have a very a couple of cool news items. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I have a two for today. And I don't. I definitely haven't checked one, and I might have checked the other. But whatever. It's, it's whatever it is. I'm trying to keep it separate. Um I remarked last about uh, five weeks ago that during the Record Store Day weekend, I went to the occasional pop-up shop by Fat Records here, a uh, still ba warehouse based in San Francisco. The you know owned by Fat Mike of No Effects, and uh, they had some not bargain price stuff that day. There we go. That's the that's the good stuff at the warehouse, which is kind of like. They did. They have. They always have bargain price stuff. But like, what was new was not discounted. What was new is new. They released some stuff just for Record Store Day weekend, and I was like, yeah, I don't need any of these things. 
so I got the, an old NoFX record that I really love, which is The Decline. And look at this beautiful front cover with this glossy NoFX logo on the top. It's foil stamped. I it's, like that. I, it's really I like, nice. I like it a lot. And this very political political uh, thing on the back. Uh, um, punk rock's now getting political. They should shut up and play guitar. Just shut up and play guitar, dude. It came in the Mylar. Thank you, Fat Records, for caring. Most of their stuff doesn't come in the Mylar, but a lot of their stuff does come with lyric sheets, fun custom vinyl colors, which you're about to see one. Look at this dandy of a lyric sheet, all cut up and paste. Like old school, looks like Maximum Rock and Roll, the magazine. That exactly. looks like a 1980s hardcore inner sleeve. And then look at this Manic Panic pink vinyl. Right on brand for no effect. It's metallic. It's 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 got the 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 warbles. It's got the metallic warbles inside. Yeah, it's got waves, and and it's beautiful. Look at how beautiful. It Hang is. on, it's are they scientific. mysterious waves or just they regular waves? Not, they are not. Do not. Oh, break this record. Do not quote that band to me ever. I hate them. I hate um, them too. And it's not mysterious waves. It's mysterious ways. So. Well, then this I didn't quote him, so you can't get mad at me for quoting him. It, it is the 40th anniversary of the band. It is the 25th anniversary of their label. And so they're putting out a lot of vinyl back out again. And then another one that I picked up last year about the you know late fall. This was literally at Thrill House. That was, uh, I think, uh, 25 bucks. We're supposed to, been, like, I, talk about how much we spend on these things, but we're so far behind in, like, checking it them. almost doesn't matter, but I know how much I spent on everything. Cause I don't remember. Of, most of them are on Discogs. Uh, you're not that. You're not. I'm f much further behind than you are. You're checking stuff that you've been buying for a month or two. I'm I have, checking like, 30 stuff to check still. Yeah, I bet. Maybe we'll, when we do our next chaser, maybe we'll do a trauma dump where you can do 10. How's that? I, I, I could probably use a trauma dump. All right, but I, I'd rather them not be with a guest and I'd rather not be when we have business to do. But anyway, so uh, I don't know if you know that I'm from New York City. I don't know if you know that I sang- No, I don't. I've, you've Did never you know mentioned where you're from. I, that I went to Fiorello H. LaGuardia High School of the Music and Performing Arts. Did you know so that? So what you're saying is you went with Henry Hill to go rob LaGuardia Airport. I did not rob Idlewild Airport, but I went to the high school named for Fiorello LaGuardia, who was the mayor of New York in the 30s and was a big patron of the arts. He loved musicals. And uh, my a musical that affected me very greatly, which ended up changing the course of my whole life, is the musical and the movie Fame. And I went to this high school this movie is based on. And so I got this for a dollar at Thrill House Records. A dollar. That's why I remember it. It's a dollar. Uh, I don't go. need this uh, gatefold. I don't need the gatefold for one vinyl, but it's cool to have the soundtrack. I saw this in the movies, and I was eight, and there's like a very inappropriate scene with a young girl and a casting director, and my mom was like, this is not supposed to happen, by the way. Um, you know, uh, I mean, the the you know everybody knows, uh, you know, I, I sing The Body Electric, the fame theme song by Irene Cara. Uh, you know, there's Wait so many Wait a minute, no, 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 The on. Body Electric is from Bull Durham. It's also on. It's from this, actually. Thanks. No ah, thanks. I think it's from Bull Durham. Durham. It isn't. Anyway, already in the Mylar. Been played. Been listened to. RSO Records. Look at this vintage label. I think. This yeah, is I've like, I've got a, a few, I've got a few of their records. Is this a cow? Uh, that is a cow. Yeah. It even uh, smells like the mildewy. Like this is forty. Oh, the years basement. Old. It smells like the basement. Yeah, it smells like somebody's basement. And just just because um, I have a lot of stuff going on, I had to get. New inner sleeves and new outer I'm sleeves pretty, from Invest yeah, in Vinyl. I'm, I'm real close to having to re-up myself. And guess what? You can get these. These are our preferred brand. You can get these at the link in the description of this video and in the link tree for Glacial Musical, which I probably should update because it's kind of out of date right now. And that is my vinyl How show. How does that record sound, the fame record? I'm going to guess. It wasn't bad. It's okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. And you have, I'm, not, do you know, I'm not the audiophile you are, but it sounded good to my ears. Do you know what the best way to tell if uh, a record pile is not worth going through at an antique mall? If do it not? smells like if it smells like that, because if it no, smells, it smells like, that, like grandma's panty draw, not in a good way. Jesus H Christ, superstar! That's so sad. No, my, gra my grandma's gone thirty years this year, so like I can make cracks. She's a well. My grandma's well gone twenty five. Yeah. 
Uh, fun fact. Not counting the my, other one, which my, I don't count. My so. grandma, who had dodged death multiple times in her life, many, many times, escaped death even for, as an infant, uh, had a stroke while I was at Woodstock 94. And that's going to come up this summer when I do a big Woodstock 94 and 99 retrospective on Ghost oh, Can we now... Uh... Happiness is a terrible trauma story. All right, let's go. News check. All right, a quick news check for me. There was one I mentioned, to mention, I mentioned to talk about this last week and I totally forgot. Ace Fraley is discussing his new record, not 10,000 Volts, which we reviewed and Keefe got wrong, but his next release. You said it was bad. It is it's not hor- bad. It's not bad. It's horrible. It's it awful. Not- it's unlistenably bad. Come on. Come on. You can't possibly be coming around on this terrible piece of music. Come on. I like it. Oh, God. It's his best record since, an- since Anomaly. No. Well, that's not yeah. saying a lot, man. No, his it's not. Are, the covers, but- they're all bad. So, may, may I finish? You may. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh... So he's talking about his next record. He talked his record label out of doing a live record. So apparently they came to the conclusion that him even recording covers is not worth it. This is Nick editorializing. This is not real. This is my editorializing. So they didn't even want to bother with him trying to get covers and record it and get it out. So his response was, oh, all the kids are just going to record it on their iPhone. Why have a live record? Okay, one, there are no kids at your shows. A kid at your show is my age. I'm the youngest. Two. I think there are parents bringing their kiss-obsessed parents are bringing to their children. Ace? Sh- I've never seen one at an Ace show. That's hey. just Nick. And on top of that, uh, the live record is still alive and well. However, the reason for Ace not to record a live record is what Ace sounds like when he plays live now. It's not good. It's 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 objectionable, objectionably bad. And with that, that is my news for the week. Oh no shit! All right, uh, do we want to talk about Trump at all? Like, I kind of want to talk about Trump. I don't know. No, uh, no. no. I mean, everybody, everybody we knows. We should. Every, everybody knows our political leanings. We have made yes. it clear. Yes. We're metal. We're liberal. Uh, I am a law and order social democrat. So when the state proves a case, I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. There you go. Moving on. Um, all right. Fair enough. Uh, so two actual pieces of news that I think are newsworthy. You brought this up recently, which is that you were going to go see the Black Keys and they canceled their headline tour. This week, we found out, even though not our domain, J-Lo, Jennifer Lopez, huge superstar, has headlined the Super Bowl halftime show. Humongous superstar actress, personality, singer-dancer, right? Started canceling dates on her headline tour for a lack of ticket sales and might kibosh the whole tour. Now, other tours are doing incredibly well. Janet Jackson, Taylor Swift. I, I think the issue is that they came too late to the party. Well, what it is is... There's a theory going on. There's a lot of conjecture this week. Two two things. We're going to talk music business for a change instead of actual music stuff. So one of the music business things is there's a lot of articles that are saying, like, maybe there's no more headliners for arenas. Maybe it's not. Because even, like, Priest did arenas, but they did half arenas, you know, with the top blocked off. So it's just, like, the bottom couple of rungs on the floor. That's eight to 10,000 people. That is not a sellout of an arena, but that's an appropriate venue for the kind of production they have. When I saw Priest three years ago, they played our 10,000-seat arena at about halfway, which is 5,000. When they came to town this year, which I did not go to, they were playing at Music Park, which is where Ace Fraley uh, supported Alice Cooper a couple years ago. I have not been to a show there, but I will be seeing Melissa Etheridge there this year. Is that an amphitheater and not an arena? Because you said uh, park. It's 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 a whole thing. It is an amphitheater and a hockey rink simultaneously. Okay, that's it's an outdoor hockey rink that also converts into an amphitheater. So, so I don't know if you know that I lived in Boston. But when I Where, lived in I'm Boston, not even, I don't even know what that means. I went to Boston University. I lived in Boston for 10, 11 years. And I used to go to concerts at the Aganis Arena where the BU Terriers play hockey 
and basketball and college sports, but they also have arena shows, and it's about 10, 11,000 people. Now, I got to see Alice in Chains play there, and it was uh, 85% full on the Black Gives Way to Blue Tour and the, Di- the Devil Put the Dinosaurs Here Tour. That uh, was that, a great record. The Devil Put the Dinosaurs Here is a great record. You should do that on DMA. Alice in Chains is incredible. Um, actually, that, that was the that Black way. that was the Black Diamond Sky Tour, so that was... Mastodon, Crack the Sky, Shut Your Face, Alice in Chains, and also Deftones. Don't say a word. What about the um, Funk Junkies? Were they not there? They were not there. Were they busy? Jimmy Chicken Shack was not invited. Although that was that name drop just sent me to the boon last week of Jimmy Chicken Shack. So I just like name dropping the Funk Junkies in the in this sure. one or two, three times a, a year, and then it's relevant. Why don't we name check the Urge more? You know how I'm a fan. And I'm not a fan. Steve's Hot Dogs. I love Steve's Hot Dogs. I'm not a fan of the Urge. I might like them better now. I only ever heard like their worst record. Maybe we'll do one. Maybe we'll do one as a chaser. We'll do their big record. Um, don't do it on DMA. Duncan will hate that shit. Um, you see I'm, Duncan no, listening no, no, to ska. Oh, oh god. god, he would be like, oh, why? What are you doing? He would instantly become a red coat at that moment. He's such a great person. And he I would become a so red bad. coat fighting for the Tories if his, he ever had to like his, listen to third wave ska his, from America. His poor eardrums are just ruined by you. Um. So we have talked a lot, like after Metallica, after Slipknot is gone, after Iron Maiden is gone, after Judas Priest, there are no arena bands, let's turn it back to us, rock and metal, who will be the arena bands? Hailstorm with a co-headliner, Shine hey, And Hailstorm is Disturbed. 20 years in now. Yeah, Disturbed. 30 years in. 25, I mean, 99, mm. 2000 was their debut. Third um, decade. Disturbed is only an arena band because of the one huge hit song that is nothing like anything they do, and it's a cover. But okay, fine. Ghost has done two arena shows Not ever. Sickness? Down not with Down the, with the Sickness? It's not a big hit. It like, wasn't? Sound of Silence. I'm not saying it wasn't a hit for metal, but it's not a oh, hit. Oh, like, pop, oh, oh. If you're going to sell tickets to an arena I, show, you have to have I some apologize. pop culture. I apologize. I miss it. You have to have a bigger following. Ozzy's I'm not sorry. returning to sorry, arenas. Sorry, sorry. We know this. He might do one or two shows ever again. Black Sabbath has been saying, by the way, that maybe they would all like to do a show with Bill. I think that's going to happen. Maybe the Birmingham no show. No way. Happen. Maybe. Uh, Ozzy should not play a show or tour. But anyway, who is – there is nobody else. I don't know who is le- – Avenged Sevenfold. I don't know who's out there that can rise up and be in an arena show. But this is a huge problem Agreed. for rock and metal. But it's actually a problem for pop artists now. If J-Lo can't sell tickets, if Janet Jackson is doing okay but not gangbusters – there's a problem. People are not can't don't want to pay the money to go, don't appreciate going, and there's no draw. So that's a problem that will trickle down to rock and metal. Now, point two. We briefly talked about this offline in a text. You might have went by you quickly. A uh, band that I love from Iceland, Solstafir, who would be a great band for a run. I don't know any Icelandic, and I'm dying to learn some. I should get the Duolingo out and learn Icelandic so I can understand what he's singing about. But I love Solstafir from Iceland. Uh, basically, if Iceland had a Thin Lizzy post-rock band. Um, and so I love the band uh, immensely. And they were like, oh, Visas just went up triple. And we were looking to book a tour because we have a new record coming soon. And we can't afford to ever come to America ever again if this is the cost of the visas to just get in the country. It will not be financially viable for us, and most European bands will not be able to afford to come to America. Now, we just had Maryland Death Fest. A lot of bands have been announcing tours and festivals for stuff that's already been paid for and booked, but any bands applying for a visa for America now from Europe are bugged and this is upsetting to me because i love to go to concerts nick a little less but like you've been going to more since we've been a little less i have been impugned sir so i'm just saying like it distresses me that these quality high quality bands from europe are not going to be able to come here and probably vice versa Complete, I uh, yeah, completely agree. Because anything that we do to them, they're going to do back, or and vice versa. As for the pop artists having an issue, we actually had a conversation about this this weekend. Uh, I was at a party for Christmas in July. A good friend of mine hosts a party most years. She has her first one actually since the pandemic, where she collects food for the homeless, and 
this year we were talking about like what concerts we are going to. And my wife and I, I remember one year we went to six and she referred to that as the summer of the crazy concert goers. Uh, this year, I think we're up to 20, including uh, we will in, in a calendar year anyway, in a full 12 months, she and I will have gone to four, uh, four stadium shows, not just arena shows. And we have amphitheater shows, we have arena shows, Everyone is touring right now. Cindy Lauper announced a farewell tour today. And I think that's kind of what people are running into is ticket prices have gone up so high. And right now there is far too much competition because everybody is realizing they missed out. Like the Chili Peppers are touring. I'm going to that. I think we spent, don't, I don't know if this is accurate, but I think we spent like $150 per ticket. That's considered sit- cheap for that tour. To sit on the lawn at the amphitheater, not even in a seat. You know, we are seeing Willie and Bob Dylan. We are seeing the Stones. We are seeing so many acts that realize they've got basically one or, and I don't mean to be rude, but they've got one or two more runs around the sun. Robbie Krieger is coming to town. Did I mention this? The cheapest tickets are $125. Uh, I've seen him twice, so I'm not going. You will never see a Doors guy ever again. I've seen I've seen two of them. So. Yeah, so they were, but like yeah, it's the same thing. Like if Nick Mason comes back, that's the last hurrah. This Gilmore run, this is it. He's not going to tour completely. Much more. It like so like again, so Hollywood Bowl in the back of my mind. Maybe I go to that Halloween show. I mean, imagine I, don't like, I love Halloween and I don't love Halloween, but um, imagine what it's like just driving in your car on a road trip on a three hour road trip. You get out to the gas station and you're so beaten up just by riding in your, your, your car. Now picture that you're doing that for 18 hours a day or picture how awful it is flying. And so you have all of these guys going, you know what? And guys and girls, you you have this this group of musicians going, this is the time. This is this is the time we're gonna sell our music and we're gonna cash in the chips, which we actually haven't mentioned that Queen presently is in talks to sell their catalog for a billion dollars, which I would say is probably overpriced. But I am going to shut up now because we've been going for a well, minute. Let me, any- let me just add one last thing. I don't know if you're a Beach Boys fan. Eh. There's an incredible Beach Boys documentary on Disney Plus and I probably Hulu. And it is mind-blowing. And this exact thing came up where the dad of the Wilsons sold the rights away, spoiler alert, sold the rights away prematurely because he didn't understand, because he was an asshole and didn't understand the music business as much as he thought he did, sold the rights to their music in the early 70s and fuck them forever financially. Kiss sold theirs in the, in the 80s and the Beatles sold theirs in the 70s. And, and then Michael Jackson bought them. Yeah, and, and then Paul they, was pissed. And then Paul stopped being his friend. He stopped being his friend. All righty. Are you ready to eat some dinner? Ready to eat the sup. Sup. So, all right. Sup. Let me. You gonna go set the s- table? Let me set I'm that gonna, table. I'm gonna do the records of the year, and then I will lead the track by track. Works. Oh, so, wait, 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 wait. Oh, shirt check. Lawyer wife got me this shirt. I like music more than people. That is a really cool shirt. Your wife is awesome. I am wearing a. Death metal shirt, obscene. The band, I think this was from the Metalhead box a couple of years ago, and I just was like, I gotta recycle some shirts, and I haven't really ever worn this one. So this is a brand new shirt I've never worn from two years ago. Fits me beautifully. I feel like this shirt is also pretty on brand for me because I don't like people. Anywho, except for my listeners, I love them. So let us get back. Well, not Get Back, because that was earlier in this. Let's move forward from Get Back. Let's head back to the 1970s. And in 1977 is where we stopped last week with News of the World. So what do you do after you drop this most amazing giant record? You go on tour. Okay, Keefe. I will tell you how many months this tour lasted. You tell me how many shows. Deal? Deal? Don't look it up. 
I got I'm, the number. I got the I'm full number. Okay, six months. So six months is how many days? 180. How many shows? Uh, at least 150 or more. I'm going to suggest you dial that back. Really? Significantly. Really? 46. Oh, were they going back and forth to the studio to make another record, or they just slowed it down? They just slowed it down. Thank goodness. I mean, eight, eight uh, seven. You know, there. This is the. We're going to do the seventh record. Six records in, you know, may, you know, less than ten years is insane. And all the touring they were doing. So basically, they played a show every three days. Now, if that doesn't seem like a lot, I'm going to show. You, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. How many songs do you think they've played on a nightly basis? Uh, I wasn't looking it up. I was typing something else. I, know. Um, I heard the typing. I heard the clickety clacks. 11. 11 songs a night. 31. What? Why? You ready? You ready for the set list? Does that include medleys, though? That has to include no. medleys. No. It does include a couple of reprises. But it has two two encores. For it, give us one set list, and then we'll move forward. I'm I'm gonna give you the average set list. You ready? Uh, in fairness, "We Will Rock You" is track one and two, slow and fast. Brighton Rock, "Somebody to Love," "It's Late," "Death on Two Legs," love that song. Killer Queen, "Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy," I'm in love with my car. Unfortunately, "Get Down," "Make Love," "The Millionaire Waltz," unfortunate. You're my best friend. That's heart. That's heart rendering. Spread your wings, liar. Love of my life. Thirty nine, like a motherfucker, like a boss. My melancholy blues. White Man, The Prophet Song, Hell Yeah, Guitar Solo, The Prophet Song, Reprise. I, that's really only one track, if we're being honest. So they're down to 28. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'm here, Stone Cold Crazy. Keep yourself alive. Tie your mother down. We will rock you. Again, apparently. We are the champions. Jailhouse Rock and God Save the Queen. That's this is a pretty great set list. You love 39. I don't know why, but you do. I don't. I don't know, man. I just do. Now, let me give you a few of the cities that they went to on this tour. Let me. Uh, we're just going to do the American cities because we're primarily an American-based podcast, and I think that's where your and I's uh, information is going to be best served. Uh, Portland, Boston, Springfield, Providence, and New Haven. Thanks, jackasses. Do you really need to do... The... Really, New Haven? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, bro. There's I mean, did there. you... Did we? It's really... on the highway. That's the only reason to do it. Did we really need a five-day tour of that, like, 50-mile radius of New England? Two B markets. Or two C B markets. Mar no, three... Two, two B markets, two C markets, and one A market. All right, moving on to a double night stand at Kobo Arena. Where's Kobo? Detroit Rock City. Correct. Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Playing Maple Leaf Gardens for one night. <laughs> Probably should have done the double night there. Uh, I got a deuce at the Spectrum in Philly. All right, now we're going to get a little crazy again. Let's move down to Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk. That's where you play. Norfolk. Okay. Richfield. I don't even know what that is. It's a village in Summit County, Ohio, population 3,800. It's got to be near something. I mean, be near Cincinnati or Cleveland. Like, how, how else could you justify that? I have no idea. Well, they played New Haven on the same tour. But New Haven mm -hmm. is near two other, like, it's, it's driving distance to Boston and New York. So that's why. Which they also played. That's not just sure. Uh, speaking of next is Landover, Maryland, which is suburban Baltimore or suburban DC. Uh, New York City for a deuce at the square. Now, because they don't own a globe, they're going to go back to Ohio and Fun play fact, Dayton. Madison Square Garden is a circle, by the way. I know. And then they play Dayton, Ohio. Not Cincy, not Cleveland, but the Dayton. fifth largest city in Ohio historically. Yeah. Uh, and then they go to Chicago, Atlanta, Fort Worth, Houston, Las Vegas. That's a big deal. And there weren't a whole lot of tours in Vegas at the time. San Diego, Oakland, LBC for a deuce. 
And then Inglewood. This is the weirdest tour lineup. This is like the three weirdest in three in the Los Angeles area. I wonder where because there were no domes or arenas back then. For uh, the they Vegas. played the so Long they... Beach Convention Center, which is where Iron Maiden recorded right. "Live After Death." Yes, and of they played the... also. Yeah, they played the Forum in Inglewood, Still which there. is, I believe, that was the Los Angeles Forum where the Kings played before. Yeah, Inglewood is technically uh, right next to L.A. ish. It's still L.A. County, uh, but I'm trying to say Vegas. They had to have played at the college because there's no building back then that could hold them. They, they played the the, Ala- the Aladdin Theater for the Performing Arts. I don't know what that is. It can't a be mid-sized huge. auditorium located now at Planet Hollywood on the Strip. Okay. Well, shit. So I probably holds about as much as New Haven. Mm-hmm. Or less. I mean, think I, seriously. Portland, Maine, Boston, Springfield, Mass, Providence, Rhode Island, and New- where the hell is New Haven? What what state is that even in? Is that Rhode Island? Connecticut, Connecticut. Connecticut. So they played the tri-state. And it's not Connecticut like Hartford, which is on I-84. It's not the good I-91. Connecticut. Not the good Connecticut. Well, I mean, like uh, Hartford is not the good Connecticut either. <laughs> but it's like really not. Hartford is where Hatebreed is from. It's like De- like Jamie Jocelyn. It's Mayonnaise sandwiches and bologna on hand. It's not a lot of wealth going on in that part of Connecticut. Connecticut is like I think uh, next to St. Louis, next to Missouri. You you love how I say that. Uh, Don't biggest, say that. Dis- the biggest disparity of rich and poor in the whole country is the state of Connecticut, uh, along with Missouri. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah. This is but the point is they they played an amazing set list to the sh- smallest number of people they could. And in the smallest geographical footprint they could come up with at each time. They played most of the places they went to. They played multiple shows within very, very nearby ranges. And it just doesn't it just doesn't make any sense. So anywho, they finished the tour, which is it's unfortunate that this tour was not a live record. We get Montreal 1986. I don't want that. I want this. Sorry, bump the mic. I mean, this is probably the greatest set list we have ever discussed for a band. Because they just, you know, oh, you want everything awesome we've ever done? We got you. Sit down. Shut up. We're going to play for however long this takes. And when curfew comes and goes, we'll pay the fines. And eh, back in those days, they didn't have curfew. I'm just kidding. Uh, I once saw a band break curfew at Riverport Amphitheater, now known as Hollywood Casino Amphitheater, and that band was Metallica. They said, we're out of time. Fuck it. We'll keep going. And they played for a half hour past curfew, so they probably lost three or $400,000 just doing that. I don't know. I'm just making numbers up. Anyway, so they go into the studio to record jazz. Uh, why they went with that title, I don't know. The cover is pretty cool. It is a geographic line eight ball surrounding a record ish thing it says queen on the top four times and it's got bicycles bicyclists going across the bottom which will become prescient later they let's see oh we're in a, a, a hefty tax bill what's this rehearsals for jazz began during the week of july 78 so they you are reading from wikipedia which we have to always have a disclaimer that we know it is a source of sources and we don't know this is bible fact i am not going to take that bait and i'm going to move forward so when you ask the question did they start recording were they bouncing? No. They started recording three months after that tour. So even that short little 50-date tour wore them out, which I can completely understand because they played so much. They get a hefty tax bill and had to record outside of the United Kingdom. Man, we heard that story a lot back at this exact time, didn't we? Uh, Pink Floyd goes to start recording The Wall in Paris. Led Zeppelin flees the, the United Kingdom at this time as well. That's kind of interesting. Even Judas uh, Priest began recording in Spain, which they did mm. for like a bunch of records, just Spain or Jamaica, Spain or Jamaica, Spain or Jamaica. And a lot of bands just stayed on tour and never went back to England well, for a long time. Iron Maiden recorded in the Bahamas for a number of years. After like their first record, most of their albums were recorded in Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, the reason why it is called jazz is they went to the Montreux Jazz Festival. So we got that. Part of the recording is at Montreux Studios in Switzerland, no? 
Um, Not the, the the studio probably. that was built after the hotel burned down from smoke on the water. Wait a minute, someone stupid with a flare gun? Yes, I I can't quote the lyrics right this second. Even the most popular riff of all time, but yes, you're right. Someone stupid with a flare gun. So burn the place the to, the, to ground. the ground. Smoke on the water, fire in the sky. Yes, yes, yes. The lyrics on that are pretty terrible, but you yeah, know, Frank. Uh, what I heard though is Frank Zappa and the Mothers had the best bass yes, around. The the best. That's bass what around. I heard. Um, do you have any other thoughts about the creation of this record before There's I? There's not a whole lot of other thoughts. I mean, they go in they. At this point in time, Queen is a well-oiled machine. We are on disc or uh, album seven, which I think this now becomes our longest-running series on a single band. I think we did more albums for Maiden, but we did double them all up, which made well. That's because we knew those so so well, and it was at the beginning, and we didn't realize that we shouldn't do that. That's yeah. We didn't know yet. Now we know. Um, this is we did yeah, the same is, thing with with King Diamond, and that. Was I a hope this idea. isn't been. I feel like this might have started to become excruciating for you, and I am really sorry. I do enjoy Queen. It is not excruciating. I. <laughs> but I mean, we are now on. We're gonna go nine episodes on this series. We have you never not go nine again on another band. Definitely correct. We, I had it in my brain. We were gonna get to Flash Gordon, and we will. We may be skipping some records to get there, and that's fine. I don't, I don't think so, except the live mm. ones I'm not interested in. Um, I'm, I'm, I will say this. I think it's been rewarding to, to really understand this band through these albums. And I think their perception of Queen is on record is much different than the reality. We're learning. Oh, God, um, yes. And so let's just talk. 1978 in music is a crazy year. Let's just, let's just run down the albums that also came out in 1978 along with Queen Jazz. And this is at the height of punk, the British I'm only going to mention if I have them. That's fair. That, I would, like to, I would like to know if you do. I think you have at least half of these or more. Uh, height of punk and the really the explosion of disco on top of other yacht rock yeah, pop it's, music. Yeah, it's a weird time. It's, it's basically the entire, you know, the, the musical... The, the musical world, the pop music world has become the battle of the five armies. You got the dwarves riding pigs on one side. You got the orcs riding bats. You know, who the hell knows what's happening? Here are the albums. Some Girls, Rolling Stones. Their definite best album of the 70s. Don't know it. Out, don't know it. I'm not a big Stones fan. Outlandos D'Amour, The Police. Uh-uh. Pieces of Eight by Sticks. Got. Darkness on the Edge of Town, Springsteen. No. Van Halen debut album, subtitled. God. Heaven Tonight, Cheap Trick. Had. I remember when my brother brought that album home and I was like, who are those cute girls? Is that heart? That's what I, I said about Motley Crue's Shout at the Devil. Uh, Elvis Costello, Fuck That Guy. Hemispheres Rush, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Warren God. Zevon, Excitable Boy. No. Parallel Lines, Blondie. What a banger. No, I have I've only got a Blondie greatest hits. And Blondie was really the first band to kind of like we're not punk anymore. We're going to do a disco record, pop and disco. Uh, Clash Blondie's like we're whatever we are at that moment, and that's that's beautiful. also true. Clash, give him enough rope. Nope. Uh, all mod cons, the jam. Mm -mm. Kate Bush, the kick inside. Nope. I have a, we have one Kate Bush record. I don't know what it is, and I don't, checked don't it care. recently. Jesus of Cool, Nick Lowe. Nope. Dire Straits. Self-titled debut album. Do mm -hmm. not care. Overrated band. Is that, is that the one with the the guitar? That's not the one I have. I got one, I got a later one. You have the good one. Yeah. There's no other good one. Uh, except for Princess Bride. Comes a time, Neil Young. Wait, that's great. that's Dire Straits. I didn't know that. Comes a time, Neil Young. Fuck that guy. Not a good record. Uh, two it's albums. A young record. Two albums by Pear Ubu. Somehow nope. I don't know how. Toto self-titled debut. I only got four. The Cars self-titled debut. So that's the one with the lady in the clear steering wheel. I mean, is it a lady? I can't tell. It's androgynous. It's this. Hang on, I think I have that one. Let you me... have that one. Yes, you've checked it. Uh, third by Big Star a band you don't have, but I definitely love. That's a lady. That's every bit a lady. I can't tell. Uh, who are you? By the Who. No. Nope. Which does have my favorite Who song, Eminence Front. Uh, cheap Trick Live at Budokan. Got it. 
Double Vision Foreigner. Got it. Stain Class Judas Priest. Don't have it. Need it. Live and dangerous. Wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Stain Class that as better by you, better than me. You have it. No, I don't. I only have Live in Japan. I don't know if it's on that one actually. Uh. Anyway. I want the one with that one. Tin Lizzy Live and Dangerous. Got it. Easter, Patty Smith Group. Nope. I have it. Road to Ruin, Ramones. I have it. <laughs> Shut up. Stranger in Town, Bob Seger. No, I've only got two live records of his. Recent acquisition by Nicholas 52nd Street, William Martin Joel from the Bronx, New York. Billy Joel. <laughs> no, I don't have that. Oh, okay. Long Live Rock and Roll by Rainbow. Got, uh, no, I need that one. Need that ne- one. Never Say Die, Black Sabbath. Horrible. Nope. Oh, Horrible. God, terrible. And you know what? I made the, the decision I'm going to buy all the Black Sabbath records with Ozzy. And so many of them are just abject terrible. Yeah, pretty bad. Uh, Blondes Have More Fun, Rod Stewart. Mm-mm. I've got a few more to go through. London, London Town Wings. I remember hating that record. I have Band on the Run, and that's it. Band on the Run is worth having. Don't Look Back, Boston. Uh, no Boston. From the Inside, Alice Cooper. Mm, which one? Yeah, I got that. Got that. Purple Eyes. Purple Eyes. Did a did a DMA on that one actually. And more songs about buildings. Talking Heads. Don't have that. Street Hassle, Lou Reed. One of his worst albums. Don't have that. No, his worst album is uh, and it's Lulu. so bad I won't even do it on the DMA. Lulu. Uh, no, like Heavy Metal Machines or whatever it's called. I know. I'm the only person that likes that record. It is awful. Uh, Tokyo Tapes, Scorpions. Terrible. Nope. Nothing. Uh, Octave by the Moody Blues, abject terrible. <laughs> One nation under a groove, Funkadelic. Oh, no, I don't have that. I need that. That's a great song. And another overrated and pretty mid-band, Heavy Horses, Jethro Tull. Oh, God, Jethro Tull. You want to talk about a band that like has just coasted on like three songs? And also, White Snake's debut album came out in 78, Trouble, which is also not that great. Yeah, I mean, White Snake is really not that great, period. And, and I need this punk record, Germ Free Adolescence. Mm, unfamiliar. X-Ray Specs. But yeah, not, I mean, a lot of greatness. A lot of greatness came out at the same time as this Queen record. That is the exercise we're doing. Like, what else came out that's notable and noteworthy at the same time? So anyway, you have set the stage. I have read the uh, peer review, the peer albums that also released at the same time. I'm sure there's a Kiss. What's uh, 78 Double Platinum? No, 78 is the four solo records. You want to talk about four records? Dynasty, Dynasty 79? Dynasty 79. Horrible. And it's not horrible. It's a Kiss record. It's 30-30-30. I am the only person that loves the Peter Chris solo album by Kiss. I know you, are not, almost, you, you are not the only one. I can't one. stop the rain. But Here I'll tell you this much. I comes. quote that record just to make fun of it. Well. Like in, in the very first arena football game, arena football video game, which my best friend and I still play to this day, Kurt Warner's Arena Football Unleashed, because we're idiots. Uh, there is a play called the Crisscross. Well, we Make call it jump, jump. So when one no no when one of us does it, and it works, the response what you do is you point at the your buddy and you go, "That's the sugar Papa likes." Okay, which is that's or the kind tossing. of sugar that Papa likes or tossing yeah. and turning. Yeah. The two football games that I ever loved: Temco Bowl, of course. Tecmo. Whatever Tecmo nope. Bowl. And uh, Fourth and Inches for the uh, Commodore 64 or 128. Uh, I loved the arena football video games. There are three of them. That is wild. So let's let's do the track by track. We're actually <sighs> breezing through this week. We might actually get done at a reasonable hour. Um, interestingly enough, when they were recording in Montreux, David Bowie was next door doing Lodger. And though they were already friends, so that's kind of fun. So David Bowie's next door, and this is not the record with under pressure. I call bullshit. Well, it's possible the seeds were sown early. I don't know. Well, then what are the damn things? Guess who's back in the producer chair for this album? <laughs> the stuff of nightmares. Roy no! <laughs> oh, no! Uh, Nick, Nick just did like a, a Superman two. Hang on, hang on, hang on, uh, hang on. Like, 
or Superman, which is the one with Zod and uh, that's, Elsa. That's two. That's two. Yeah, Superman well, two. I, like, eh. what's his name again? Roy, don't look. Don't look. I'm not gonna Google it. What's his name? You're googling it right now, and then you're Roy? gonna Google him. Roy Thomas Baker, and then your eyes are gonna melt. Oh no! I hate. Ah, oh, I did it. <laughs> you're terrible. Literally, me. Nick's face, just like Roy Thomas Baker's face, is like literally uh, the bad guy in Indiana Jones. Ah! Yeah, the, when he's melting. When he's melting, but 40 years in the future. Work all that out amongst yourselves. Or Google it, but don't. So, Track one, do it. Right off the bat, this album throws a curveball at everybody. I don't know why this is dog barking in my alley, but okay. Mustafa is the first track. It is world music. You know that Freddy's ancestry, he's from originally from Zanzibar or Mozambique. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty crazy mishmash of cultures and, and languages and, and songs, but it's actually a pretty fun track. They did it live a lot. You used to do it as the intro to Bohemian Rhapsody, which is wild. And it's not a bad track to lead the record off to me. What do you think about Mustafa? I'm going to quote the greatest Jedi in the history of the world. Every word you just said was wrong. Uh, the Acolyte coming on tomorrow at uh, tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah, we tomorrow. were talking about that. Yeah, I'm talking. I'm, and uh, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about uh, the Rangers losing and being out of the playoffs. But anyway, go Oilers! Uh, I was going to say a, congratulations. A, you know, a they got that phrase I have never mentioned in my life. I haven't decided Oilers. whom I'm rooting for. I was rooting for everybody but Dallas. I mean, I want to see. I want to see McJesus. You know, get his ring. Because I think if McJesus does not get a ring, he does not go to the Hall of Fame. That's probably true. It's hockey. Uh, the, so, so you're in anyway. England Mustafa, to back to back yeah. to music. Uh, who asked for this? Who needs this? This is terrible. It's not a curveball. It's a beanball at the listener. No. Okay. Freddie, who is very religious, also is not allowed to have a song about his ancestry and Islam. And be be gentle when you're <laughs> shitting on this guy's. This is right from his heart and soul, but okay. I that guess. doesn't make a song good. That's fair. Um, it was a single, which is insane. Right. Uh, which why is, is this? It, is, that's insane. Like Correct. That's the weirdest part about this. That is, is the this woke was a culture single. of 1979 at the record label happening right there. The second track, though, makes up for it. One of the all-time great hard rock songs ever made. Of Fat time. Bottom Girls, you make the rockin' world go round. And this was a double single with Bicycle Race because the songs kind of reference each other. But let's talk about Fat Bottom Girls by itself. Holy You want to see all the white ladies dancing? Go to any bar at about 2 in the morning when they play this. Everybody will get up. Everybody's drunk. Everybody's happy. And it's a great song. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous. It's it's juvenile. It's puerile. It is. But it's everything you want a band like Queen to be. I don't want Queen to try to sing to me about religion and praying with Allah, Freddie. I want irreverence, sexy time, whatever, goofiness. And Fat Bottom Girl has all of it, even if it's a little cringy, because it's about... His nanny. Ew. I don't think it's meant to be a literal song. It's just a pay on. It's just an ode to fat ass women. And let's just take a minute to say, listen, he likes women. You raised him right. He's still a virgin. He appreciates women. And let's take a second to, to notice that. Like, let's peruse the book this thing. It's a song about fat asses. I don't think the lyrics are meant to be interpreted. He's doing a great job. He's going to be still a virgin. <laughs> this is the maid speaking, by the way. Anyway, is this Marianne with the pot? It isn't Marianne with the pot. Oh, my God. Uh, Brian May wrote this, one of the best guitar solos ever. Drop D tuning. For people who think the grunge guys invented drop D, Queen did not invent drop D, but they have many songs in drop D, and it gives that really great crunch crunch on the chords. Uh, fantastic song. No notes. Um, correct, correct. The next track is what I consider to be another curveball. Would have been interesting by another artist, but Jealousy, also somehow a single. 
I think Queen was hitting all the notes with the piano ballads. Somebody to Love, Bohemian Rhapsody, Love of My Life is a guitar ballad. But uh, Jealousy is an interesting song. It's got a key change that I like, rather. Uh, it's played on a, an acoustic guitar that's meant to mimic a sitar because they clearly didn't have one. So they faked having a sitar with chicanery, guitar chicanery. Um, Freddie, beautiful vocals. I don't... It's not like an outstanding song, but it, it's decent. And I think if this was done by like a Billy Joel, it might have actually been like... Or Elton John, it would have been an incredible, huge song. That's my take. What do you think? We'd like to know. Have you ever heard the phrase, stepping on your own dick? Said it about you about two weeks ago. I think this is uh, when Brian May stepped on Freddie's dick. Not stepping on your own dick, but stepping on your friend's dick. And then making him sing after you did it. Because this, no, 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 no. No. All right, I, I understood. Nope, that's two no's for Nick. And one outstanding yes. And then the other song. Bicycle Race. Apparently, they had seen the 18th stage of the Tour de France, according to the Source of Sources Wikipedia, and Freddie was just inspired to write about Bicycle Race. And not only is the song a banger with the bicycle bell in middle part, the breakdown, the bicycle bells, and then the raucous, almost heavy metal uh, you know, like, uh, let's say the middle part of the guitar solo. Great call and response vocals. This is an incredible song. It's one of their best songs. And it's got a bunch of tempo changes, which you really only got from Rush, King Crimson, or Pink Floyd at this time. They're really flexing their musical muscles on this one. And then, of course, we have to talk about the Bicycle Race video with hundreds of naked women riding through London. That had to be a sight to see. I would have been very upset if they had asked me to help film. <laughs> what are your what is your take on bicycle race this love song? this song i mean this song is as good as chocolate if you don't like chocolate you're a nazi you don't like this song you're a nazi that's i mean i don't know i don't know how she could put Jesus, it this man. what we need, we need to not say that n-word all right N-word all right when we're doing a podcast it's definitely gonna hurt us uh all but right. here, i'm not gonna edit this out anyway uh one I was appa- quoting uh, jay and silent bob reboot apparently yes you were apparently the dueling guitar solo of Brian May dueling with himself toward the end of the song that I aforementioned is actually supposed to emulate a bicycle race. It's like also from classical music, right? No, I appreciate the effort. I don't get it. This was a double single, Fat Bottom Girls and Bicycle Race. And of course... The fat bottom girls they'll be riding today is quoted. Literally a nod to their own song on the same album. Queen has been famous for nodding back, like, you know, winking back at themselves from if past you albums. Now they're doing it within yourself, two songs. Who will? Well, that's fair. That's also very British. I don't think people understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. T. If You Can't Beat Them is the next song. And honestly, I don't want to beat them or join them. This is okay. John Deacon. If You Can't Beat Them, write this song and skip yeah. it. John Deacon wrote it. It's kind of skippable. The skip for me. Not the song by the by Stephen Sondheim from the musical Gypsy. Let me entertain you is another track, very self-referential about their own touring career. I don't. It's okay, but I don't love this song. I, it's all right. It's n- it's Sondheim. not the worst song on this side. <laughs> Well, no, it's definitely not. It's probably Bicycle Race or Jealousy. Again, you think Mustafa's terrible. I think it's good. But oh, I hate it. Mustafa. Okay. Bicycle Race is amazing. How could it? No. No, no, I said Jealousy. You said Bicycle Race Oh, or no, jealousy. I don't mean Bicycle Race. Sorry, Jealousy. If you um, can't beat them or Jealousy is the worst. I'm not sure okay. which one it is. All right. That's not but, good. you know, this song is... you do it's... have two all-time classics on the record. On the oh, yeah, song. yeah. That, that's the thing with Queen, man. They are going to hit... They, they These guys are classic 80s home run hitters. They're going to get out three quarters of the time, but three quarters of the time they don't get out. It works every time. Fair enough. Flip the record. Flip it. And Dead on Time is the first track on side two. And I'm confused a little bit by this one. It's supposed to be a rocker. 
It does have two very mm -hmm. high notes by Freddie, like his almost pinnacle high notes for him, because we discussed at length that Roger actually has a higher voice than. Hang on, what is this? A Steve Vai thing? Like, oh, look at what I can do on guitar. Look a little vocal. bit. And then apparently they recorded a thunderbolt during a thunderstorm, and on the liner notes on the album, it is credited to God played the thunderbolt. God, Jesus, Jesus. I this song's just okay again. Good guitar solos. It's that good. Okay, moving on. It's good. It's not great. Uh, okay, I'm surprised. Two greats I, and a lot of okay, right? I disagree that it's good. I don't think oh. I don't think it rises to that level. I think it rises to the level of filler. Okay. Uh, which, the, which is the, which is better than some of the songs on the previous side. The other song written by John Deacon, besides "If You Can't Beat Them," is "In Only Seven Days," a biblical reference. And John played guitar on the song, and it was the B-side to Don't Stop Me Now, coming up in a few songs. Don't need this one. Oh, look, Ringo wrote another song. <laughs> we'll Let's put, put it, it right on the fridge. I put it on the fridge. Everybody can see. John Deacon. John. John, I mean, you wrote, he wrote song. You're My Best Friend and Another One Bites the Dust. So he gets a pass for life, but, like, you're wrong. This song's not good, though. No, this song is terrible. Yeah, it's a bad one. Skip it. Um, Dreamer's Ball is Brian May's tribute to Elvis Presley. Did not need it. Oh, God. No. No. See, again, when they nail it, oh, my God, you will just do anything to hear more of that song. <clears throat> and when they miss. They miss real bad. Um, the next track, which I believe this is a British expression. My Brits help me out. Fun It. Fun It is a funk track with a disco vibe, according to Wikipedia. This is the Obscured by Clouds of Pink Floyd as to Fun It is to Another One Bites the Dust next year. So this is the this is the first try at a rapish disco song with a disco beat, the same tempo as Another One Bites the Dust without the good bass line and the great vocals. Yeah, but I can enjoy Obscured by Clouds. I cannot enjoy this. There are synth drums on here for the first time ever on a Queen song. Hooray! Yeah, well, I mean, it's notable. It's not good. Yeah, you know what else is notable? A really smelly fart. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, the next track, side two, is the nadir of this whole album, boy. Uh, except for one song. Leaving oh, Home Ain't Easy. Almost there. Oh, we're almost, we're almost there. there. Leaving Home Ain't Easy is a ballad by Brian, sung and played by Brian. And it's actually okay. It's pretty good. You know what's really you know what's really easy? Skipping it to go to the next song. Well, that's probably a lot of people got this record, listened to it all the way through a couple of times, and then were like, Oh, every time I flip the record, I'm just gonna go right to the last song. Yeah. The you, last song We we oh. we just had just for the re before we, you know, unveil the secret song that ever that no one knows. Uh, one, two, three. We had five skips in a row. It's uh, a rec it might be a record. I don't know. I mean, that no, is the, no, no, because Quiet Riot Japanese records are. It's horrible. the. This is the it, for a '70s band that is known for quality songwriting. Yes, that's a record, because you never put that much crap. You gotta put it into the soft underbelly, and they didn't do that. They just, they just, whatever. They just, you know, <sighs> put it out on the street for everybody to see. Well, we have said some of their records have diminishing returns despite the great, great tracks. And so, speaking of great, great tracks, I'm now going to arc ropes, jizz ropes of arcing liquids at everybody. Don't Stop Me Now might even be better than Bicycle Race and Fat Bottom Girls when you really think about it. It, it is. is. No, it, it is. This is the best song on the record. amazing song. It was already an amazing song in my childhood. And then it popped up in one of my favorite movies ever, Shaun of the Dead. the Dead. Yeah! I know it's also in Heart Kill the Henry. Queen! I know, to I know Top Gear shouted it out, but like, it, Shaun of the Dead, the whole movie is made by the scene in the bar at the Winchester with Don't Stop Me Now. I love unbelievable. Loved, and I don't think they did it in the third movie in the trilogy as much, and I haven't watched it as much, in fairness. But the, the storytelling of Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, where they do the same scene twice, each scene they do twice. And each time is a little bit different than the first time. And it's it's just such a great way of telling a story. And that was probably the first time I really knew this song. It was the first time that it ever really seeped into my consciousness. And yes, I love that movie. I love the Blood and Cornettos trilogy. 
And I still check to see just in case they're doing anything new for me to check out. It's very rare that they do anything together. Simon Pegg is now an A-lister and sober and all that business. I want I want one more. I want I I really want another Star Trek movie with him as Montgomery Scott, but like I can't have everything I want. Did um, you know that he wrote the last one? Yes. And um, it was better than the second. I mean, yes. but speaking of diminishing He's a returns, better writer than he's a better writer than any of the uh guys who wrote on Lost that did the first two. Uh Yeah, anyhow. speaking of diminishing returns, the the Star Trek reboot well, we'll see. Maybe there'll be another one. We'll find out. Uh, there will not. Don't Stop Me Now is an incredible song. It is almost all written by Freddie, except the guitar solo. Wow. So he wrote Bicycle Race and Don't Stop Me Now, mostly by himself. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. The guy is, what can't he do? Make a complete album, but what he can do no, is No, he cannot bangers. do that. He, yeah. Oh, yeah. Queen, Queen has actually not, by the way, we're going to talk about this at the end. Tell it foreshadowing. Queen does not have a complete album at all after the second or third record. They don't have one. No, they don't. Sorry, uh, there's a lot of they're if they're not the only band. Iron Maiden yes, is that way Maiden. too. 30, 30, and, 30. Yeah, but the thing is, this is, this is like eighty twenty. Oh, I know. Uh, real 80 quick, bad. Uh, next track, more of that jazz that no one needs. Yeah, this is around. This is so like you could almost argue the whole album title that came from this idea of a pastiche by roger uh i'm not mad at it i just don't need it it's, it's i not find mad. tracks like it's this filler. tracks like tracks yeah, it's filler and tracks like this don't mean anything to me i Correct. can't imagine Same. there's somebody out there's like when i heard more of that jazz it changed my whole world view now like queen that's like hearing somebody hearing rock and roll party at the end queen, of uh, queen kiss destroyer yeah queen could have did a jazz song they had the capability to play jazzy uh but they chose not to they chose to do this weird fucking goofy thing that doesn't whatever the hell anything. it is i don't even know Means what it is nothing except that it's where the title of the album comes imagine getting this album in 1978 and get pulling out the vinyl and then you get a giant poster of these naked women on a bike at prudish Thatcher. Then you say thank you. 70s Thatcher, London, right? England. Like, imagine a teenager's surprise if his parents weren't around to see him pull out this picture of naked women. How much fapping happened to this poster? I'm going to guess a lot. A whole lot. Ew. Nick doesn't want to even think about it. Anything else about this record? Anything else? Anything else spring to your mind in a minute or two, so we can bust yeah, out of here. I, I, there was something I wanted to discover or discovered. I don't want to. Discuss. This album was critically killed at the time it came out. Killed by the major press. Killed, killed by Cream. Killed by Rolling Stone. Killed by Robert Criscow. Killed. No, I, we're. I mean, I, I'm killing it right now as a record. And you know, recently on one of my forums, somebody asked. How many Kiss studio albums would be in your personal top 10 of all time? Uh, none. Not a one. Because Kiss has never done a great record. And they have created the greatest live album of all time. Uh, I would go so far as to say, because we are seven records into Queen, and most of the albums are kind of bad. And yes, we are now kind of slogging through this because it's like, oh, Man. it's like, oh, God, here we got Bicycle Race, followed by seven songs in a row that I don't want to hear. The majority they're not even remotely enjoyable. That's true. No. So it goes from track four. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the next seven tracks, seven tracks I don't want to hear. Holy shit. I mean, do that math. That seven, that's almost a record. Then it gets to Don't Stop Me Now, and you're like, pay off. And so I, if you're going to ask that same question about Queen, how many Queen records would you have in your top ten records of all time? The answer is absolutely zero. It's... Um, I think that on time is halfway decent. They never played it live, so they didn't even like the song. Okay, but like halfway it's not decent. 
yeah, yeah, halfway decent. It's it, not for it's, this band that is capable of the greatest stuff ever. Right. I think they just didn't put the... I, I'm going to say this. I, I, I think this is a little bit of a cheat toward the end of the series. I don't think so. But let's face it, Nick so. already doesn't like the next two albums, which I love. I adore them. I, probably I haven't gonna, heard the next they're one Probably yet. They're probably not going to... La- like the, My mental impression of how much I love these records is probably way off from how the reality. But I want to say that I think... They just, they, they knew they could pull hits out of their ass. These are some of the most brilliant people of all time. I we know. are living in a time when a hit song sets you up for life. We didn't know that back then, but we do now. And I would say that they definitely jaked it on a lot of these records where they wrote a couple of bangers and then were like, let's just fill up the record with whatever we can fart out so we can get back on tour where the money is. And A record yeah. has to be at least 30 to 35 minutes at this time, and they don't have 30 to 35 this minutes. This album has 11 good minutes. Uh, 11. Hang on. that's Let's see. You 11. Got four. 11. You got four. You got seven. Mom, tell him how old he is. 11. Uh, uh, it's only nine. It's only nine I forget minutes. That fat, like fat, like bicycle. Fat bottom girls is actually short, and bicycle. I'm sorry, it's long. ten. It's it's ten. There's ten quality minutes out of forty four. Ugh, it's terrible. I mean, when you say that out loud, it's horrifying. That's like the Mendoza line right there. We are below the Mendoza line. We are. We are. All right. Well, that's another one in the bag. Another the one next, bites the dust. That's the next there. week. That's next week. I am. I am truly sorry. Like I gave everybody doesn't know this as we as we get through this series, I I gave Nick an out earlier to make this the last episode of Queen to spare him the agony of the next two episodes and then a chaser. But he said, "No, we're going to finish it now." So we're going to finish these next two. We have talked about the Flash Gordon soundtrack at least Well, we have to times. do this movie and the soundtrack. I really want to watch the movie and do a soundtrack with you, but but I don't know if it was like you and I have enough. We're not. It's not like we're gonna get monetized anytime soon. Let's just watch the movie and do the commentary after we review the album. I don't know. We'll see if we have time. It would. It would take like a like two and a half hours. I don't know if you want to do a pod with me for that long. Um, I have nothing else, and I took us home. I think on the last pod with Sean. You did. You did. So I, I will say then. I am gonna. Hopefully, you've been hooked. And we can fish in with the mega happy ending. Thank you very much for checking us out this week. This is this podcast. It's not monetized. It's not digitized. Well, I guess it is digitized, but it's it's not everywhere. And the thing is, is we do this because it's fun. And we do this because we think there is value into what we are doing. Hopefully it is entertaining. Hopefully it is educational. And that is what we shoot for every week. We have reached the limit of how far we can go on this podcast. So where we need your help is to tell your friends that we can't reach. So if that means retweeting, reposting, sharing a link, sending a link via text message, if you could do that, then uh, you are amazing. You are awesome. And in fact... In the near future, there may may very well be a contest to get a pile of records off of my shelf. And then there are some good ones in there that I might be willing to put in. So we will get to that at another time. Feel free to get with me. You know Keefe. He is available at Ghost Cult Mag or at Ghost Cult Keefe in all of the socials. On Twizitter, you can catch me at N-I-K underscore N-O underscore C, Nick No C. On everything else, Google Glacially Musical, and you will find me on Facebook, Blue Sky, Threads, and Instagram. If you like vinyl porn, my Instagram is where you need to be. And with that, I will say thank you very much for joining us. This has been the Glacially Musical Podcast. It does not play in Peoria, but French Explorer... Henri de Tonti did when he founded the damn place. Fat bottom girls, you make the rockin' world go round. Henri.